In-depth sports coverage from The Athletic is now just £1 a month with an introductionary offer. See the link in the description to sign up. Marcelo Bielsa and Pep Guardiola met for the fourth time in their managerial career uh, on Saturday at Ellen Road. Pep is still unbeaten against the man who he cites as a major influence. They met in 2006 when uh, Pep was playing in Mexico, went down to Argentina, met Bielsa, they had a barbecue, moved some furniture around, and Pep came away thinking, I've learned more about football than I ever knew before. Um, this match has echoes with their first game. That was a 2-2 between Athletic Bilbao, managed by Bielsa, uh, and Pep's Barcelona. That was back in November of 2011, and there are similarities in that both teams used a 4-3-3 with a single pivot. Barcelona, like Man City, didn't field any recognised forwards, and the game also saw a kind of frenetic end to it. Um, these coaches are both considered ideologues. Uh, you can see that by the fact that these games played out in similar ways, but goals definitely change games. So we're going to have a look at, at the goals that occurred on Saturday and how they overall affected the dynamics of the game itself. Both teams played with a, a kind of 4-3-3. Leeds formation is generally represented as a 4-1-4-1. Uh, whereas Cities is a 4-3-3, but there are basic similarities. A few things to note, as we've said, uh, City didn't play with a recognised striker, so they had Mares up here, Sterling on the left-hand side, and Ferran Torres, the new summer signing on the right. Phil Foden played very, very high up, operating almost as a kind of second striker. De Bruyne was running in this channel here, and also pushing out to the right-hand side, to try and create that sort of five men forwards that City like, while Rodri was sat as a defensive midfielder. City's fullbacks, Walker and Mendy to start with, obviously pushed up customarily high as they do. And uh, what is believed to be the new first choice centre back pairing of, of Diaz and Laporte um, sat back a little bit. For Leeds, Generally speaking, they're using their normal formation, and there's not an awful lot to note here. Um, Roberts got forward quite a lot in support of Bamford. Bamford was very busy running into the channels here, as we can see. Um, but it's pretty much what we'd expect from Leeds. So Raheem Sterling scored after 17 minutes, and what we can see is that up to that point, there was really only one team in it. City squeezed Leeds back as much as they possibly could, uh, and they implemented a really intelligent and consistent form of pressing, which we'll have a look at here. Uh, City overwhelmingly dominated the possession. Their pressing numbers were very, very high. They were up at about 8.8 .8 PPDA, which is passes per defensive action. That's the general metric that we use to, to talk about pressing. So the lower the number, the more intense the press and City pressed intelligently, particularly from the front three. There are a couple of reasons why they were doing that, and we'll, we'll talk about that now. So the main point of the press was to ensure that uh, Calvin Phillips, who is Leeds' predominant progressor of the ball, uh, was unable to do that. So Phillips likes to drop in, receive the ball from the centre-backs, uh, and then progress the ball up the pitch. So what City did was they pushed De Bruyne forwards, Mares was quite forwards. Sterling was marking where possible the fullbacks, and Torres was doing the same thing. Leeds like to push their fullbacks up, so it's easy to create kind of cover shadows there um, if the fullbacks don't push up all the way, which they're not going to do because that would leave space in behind. When Melier, the Leeds goalkeeper, had the ball, he was pressed often but not always and there are a couple of pressing triggers that City used that were quite clear so if a Leeds player dwelt on the ball for probably about two and a half to three seconds then City would press. One of the other pressing triggers was that if Leeds advanced to a certain point on the pitch um, which is uh, sort of about 10 yards forwards of the edge of the penalty area uh, that would also engage the press as well. There's a reason for this. City were trying to ensure that Leeds had reduced passing angles, so they couldn't get the ball forwards to Phillips, and inevitably they'd then have to play the ball out wide. There's an instance of this where Melier has the ball, and he lets it roll across the front of him, 
at which point Mares presses hard in with Phillips in the cover shadow because that means that Melier can only pass the ball out to the right hand side uh, towards Ailing. That allows Sterling to press, it allows Mendy to come forwards and press. Basically City were trying to hem leads in in the wide areas, prevent the ball out to Phillips and just build and build and build that pressure. And that pressure works because there are a number of instances where Leeds, I think it's seven times in the first half, Leeds turn the ball over and that results in a Man City shot. And of course, Sterling's goal comes from a hurried clearance, which is the result of this kind of pressure. Uh, and that takes us up to the first goal. The remainder of the first half was Leeds trying to get themselves back into the game. Uh, Leeds were able to start pressing a little bit better, they were able to get a little bit more time on the ball, and that's slightly because City sat off. If you press that intensely for the first 15-20 minutes of a game, it's very, very difficult to keep that going, both from a, a physical and a mental perspective. So obviously there was going to be an ebb and flow there and, and we saw Leeds start to get their foot on the ball a little bit more. Uh, the main point though came at the beginning of the second half. Uh, that was when Bielsa made his first change, bringing on Ian Perveda, who was a former Man City youth player, uh, coming on uh, for Alioski with Helder Costa moving out to the left-hand side. So Costa swaps over to this side and Perveda's over here on the right. The rest of the team stays very much the same. But what this allows Leeds to do is aggressively target Benjamin Mendy. Mendy was getting forwards quite a lot during that first half. Uh, and, you know, athletically, he's a reasonably good defender, although there appears to have been some sort of drop off. But positionally, he's a little bit um, dubious. So with Mendy getting forwards, Perveda was looking to stretch the game to stay quite wide before cutting inside. What this did that was crucial was it started to drag City over to their left-hand side. So what we can see is that Phillips was moving over as well for Leeds into what is his right-hand side quite a lot more. That allowed him to escape the press a little bit and it started this sort of hollowing out of central midfield that we see more and more as the game goes on. Roberts and Click were pushing up to try and create as many bodies forwards for Leeds as possible. And so you get this slightly odd instance where you know Leeds would sometimes have as many as five or six players in the wide channel and around what is their right half space, uh, Man City's left half space. So there's a real kind of overload, particularly on the right. That's because Perveda's such a direct runner that he causes everyone to sort of drift towards him to try and help out defensively. That achieves something on the far side of the game as well because Helder Costa is suddenly in an awful lot of space. And that's a, a natural result of, of Man City's drift over to, the, to their left-hand side, which is completely understandable. Uh, not something that they shouldn't have done. But what that means is that when Leeds are able to switch the ball or clear the ball long into that left-hand side with everybody expecting it to go down Leeds' right-hand side, suddenly there's an awful lot of space. Just before the goal, I think two or three minutes before the goal, Rodrigo has come on. He's playing sort of as an attacking midfielder, second striker, Bamford is, is very definitely still leading the line and looking to provide that kind of aerial threat and that pressing. So we can see Leeds sort of stacking across onto this their right-hand side as normal. And the goal comes from a, a long clearance downfield. Ruben Diaz heads the ball forwards and Costa is in an awful lot of space, basically on his own and is able to pick up that second ball. And that's a result very much of City being dragged across to their left-hand side. Click is coming in field. Um, Costa manages to pass the ball to him. Click moves forwards, releases Rodrigo, who drifts inside. Now, Walker's actually up here. Walker is uh, quite easily bypassed. 
Rodrigo cuts in, Walker tries to drop back. Diaz actually does quite well one-on-one, -on -one, um, but Rodrigo's able to get a shot off, that forces a save, forces a corner, and from that corner, Leeds are able to score. So what we can see is that the dynamic of the game at that point, Bielsa's managed to basically get more of a grip on stuff. The end of the first half was Leeds working their way back into it, but then Bielsa makes a specific change, encourages Phillips to escape the cover shadow by going much, much wider, brings on Perveda, who's a direct runner, a, di a direct aggressive threat with the ball. That drags Manchester City across to their left-hand side, which is defensively weaker because of Benjamin Mendy, and that's exactly how Leeds then conjure up their goal-scoring opportunity. At this point, uh, Guardiola now responds and he makes several substitutions um, which are aimed at doing several things. So Ake here comes on for Benjamin Mendy. That is an obvious decision to try and shore up uh, that left-hand side. The assumption being that Ake, although he's not as mobile as Mendy, will offer more defensively against Paveda, who was basically running the show at that point. Bernardo Silva also comes on. Um, that's really to try and give uh, a little bit more control of the ball uh, in midfield. Um, Bernardo Silva is, is good at carrying the ball forwards, but he's also quite an astute passer. Foden moves out here uh, onto the left-hand side. Uh, Torres, who didn't do too badly, um, comes off. Mares goes out to a more natural wide right position for him with Sterling going through the centre. Leeds at this point are looking really quite aggressive uh, and with Phillips coming over uh, and later on during the game Dallas uh, who comes on, uh, or Dallas moves into central midfield because Leif Davis comes on at left back, um, you start seeing these massive gaps in midfield because the Leeds midfielders are trying as much as possible to work in these wide areas because Leeds realise that they're getting the most joy from attacking wide. Uh, City are getting the most joy from attacking centrally, so they, they stiffen their options there, whereas Leeds try and draw the game out towards the flanks. What that means is that you get this massive gap in central midfield. Now, there's an interesting point. If you look at Leeds' proportion of long passes, they're at their highest in the first quarter of the game and in the last quarter of the game. Um, but that's for very different reasons. In the first quarter of the game, Leeds are pumping it long because they're desperately trying to clear their lines. In the last quarter of the game, it's because basically there's no central midfield for Leeds because the midfielders are drifting into these wide areas to try and you know, get these overloads in the channels. And so Leeds are hitting it long to try and, and you know, progress the ball quickly into those wide areas. So what you can see there is, is the, the, the same sort of statistic, but very different in terms of the context. That's why you need to watch games rather than just look at numbers. City were still trying to work the ball through midfield um, with De Bruyne pushing up and down a, a lot here, sometimes almost looking like a double pivot with Rodri uh, and Silva sort of operating in this space here. That actually uh, preempts the, the change that ultimately uh, Guardiola makes to try and get some control over the, the last sort of 15 minutes of the game, and that's bringing on Fernandinho, which Bielsa said was a very, very clever uh, transition. So at this point, with Fernandinho on, he obviously drops here. De Bruyne starts playing in the 10 spot, uh, and Silva moves out. City are playing in basically a 4-2-3-1. Uh, as the game reaches its crescendo, City start throwing bodies forwards. Their defensive line pushes up to as high as it's been at all. Um, they're attacking more times per minute than at any other point during the game. Um, but the game has basically lost its flow at this point and, and both teams are kind of pushing backwards and forwards. So what we can see is that although these two coaches set out with with very clear sense of how they want to play the game and, and very clear patterns of play that goals really do have a massive impact and you know you can play a certain way to create a goal but once that's happened 
both teams will respond to that and that sometimes can allow a team to cement their position in the game or as we saw here it can open up the opportunity for the opposition to come back and then reach this kind of slightly chaotic finish. The Athletic is in-depth sports coverage that helps fans see the game from every angle. And Tifo is delighted to be able to offer full access to The Athletic now for just £1 per month. See the link in the description for details of this introductory offer. For football fans, that's access to the writing of journalists dedicated to your team, plus David Ornstein, Phil Hay, Daniel Taylor and many more. Not to mention over 400 full-time writers offering inside access and independent analysis of every team that you follow across every league that you care about. Get local expertise and unmatched league-wide perspective. The Athletics writers are in the bubble, on the field and behind the scenes as it all happens. Catch up, go deep, and join the conversation on the most important happenings in sports.